Good afternoon and welcome to the NCAA Division I Women's Basketball Championship post-game press conference featuring South Carolina. We are now joined by student athlete Leticia Amir. And please use the raise hand function to indicate you would like to ask a question. And when you are called on, please unmute yourself and say your name and affiliation first before stating your question. The first question comes from Greg Hadley. Hey, Leticia, this is Greg Hadley from the State Newspaper. I was just curious, it seemed like you and Destiny both came up very big in that in that first half especially. How important was the was the bench play for you guys today and how much pride do you take in, in coming up big in this big stage for you guys? Uh, it's always important, especially in a tournament right now. Um, we got to come up big. We've got to come up big because the bench is it's a big part of who we are and being able to go um, deep in our bench is going to be so important, especially down the stretch right now. Next question is from Joe. Joe, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Hi, Leticia. Joe Gorcho, WIS News 10 in Columbia, South Carolina. Congrats on the win. You mentioned taking pride in that bench play for yourself. How have you embraced the challenge issued to you over these last couple of weeks without Lily? Dawn has relied more heavily on you to provide what you are in these last few games. How much have you embraced that challenge issued to you to deliver on this stage? Um, first of all, thank you. And um, I just think it's important to come out um, whenever my name's called. Um, coach trusts me um, to go out there and put in the work, so I have to be able to deliver um, whatever she needs me to do at that time. I have to be able to do that. So um, I, it definitely sucks. We, we were very sad that um, Lily wasn't able to come up this tournament. It's a huge loss on our team. Um, but being able to recover and keep going and, um, you know, during this season, a lot of people are losing players and it's who can adapt and who can um, move forward. Next question is from David. David, please unmute yourself, state your name and affiliation. Hey, LA, it's David from the Post and Courier. Um, you know, Aliyah is obviously a big part of what y'all do. That said, how much confidence does it give you as a team that even when she goes scoreless in a half, you guys can have the lead and uh, really play pretty well even when she doesn't have that many points? I think the thing with Aaliyah, she's an all-around player. I mean, look at the accolades. It's not only um, scoring, it's defense as well. So um, although she's not giving us some buckets on, on the board, but she's doing so much more to give a, our team that boost that we need. So um, obviously, she's going to score her points. You see that in the second half. Um, but she gives so much more to the team that um, even though she's not scoring, we're still able to feel her presence. Next question is from Keith. Keith, please unmute your name and then state your name and affiliation. Hi, Leticia. Keith Alsep, 24-7 Sports. Can you just talk about what you saw out there on the court today? Uh, you look very confident, uh, very sure of yourself, and very decisive going to the basket. Talk about your role and how much more comfortable you seem to feel with each game in this NCAA tournament. Yeah, it's definitely high-level play. Um, so I think just adjusting to high-level play um, and not overthinking, I think that's a big thing for me. Um, just being decisive and, and giving my team what they need. Uh, we have great preparation at practice. I think it starts in practice. Um, I have that confidence just um, working hard. Our, te our team competes really hard during practice. So uh, being able to translate that in the game um, was really important for me this tournament. Um, and I think I've been able to do that. Next question is from Dick. Dick, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. This is Dick Cox with Wendy Sports and Cox Sports Broadcasting. Did you feel like when Aaliyah got in foul trouble that you were going to really have to step up in a big way today if you were going to advance? And along with that, too, do you feel like this is your best game you've ever played at South Carolina? You had 15 points, seven rebounds, no missed layups, no missed free throws. Um, yeah, so I think that um, with Aaliyah, 
she gives so much to our team. So um, definitely when she's out, when she's in foul trouble, um, I have to step up. Everybody has to step up um, and give what she, she's missing. So um, in terms of that, we just try to surround her and help her out. But um, I'm, I'm happy that she has a great second half as well. Um, moving forward, I know she's going to kill it um, with the games coming up. Um, and in terms of the second question, I think that um, I would agree that it was uh, my most focused game. Um, I think just working on being focused and, and um, zoned in every game, I think um, in that aspect, I think it was my best game in that aspect. Next question is from Joe. Joe, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. I'm teacher Joe Gorcho again from WIS TV in Columbia. From a more personal standpoint, how tough has it been for you uh, to keep your focus on helping this team, knowing someone you care about deeply is going through a battle right now? And how much has she meant to you throughout your journey? Um, I think she's just a pillar of perseverance. And I think that, um, I, I mean, I wrote it on my shoe just to play for her. Um, but she's a pillar of perseverance. So whenever I know I'm, I'm tired, you know, I'll tap my shoe and it just gives me a boost of confidence because whenever I was going through injuries or whenever I was going through um, something that was tough during basketball, I would just remember her resilience and that would just give me automatic boost and automatic um, power to just keep going. So um, it's definitely tough, but my teammates make it so much easier for me um, and also my coaches. Next question is from Sunnel. Please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Sunil Sundaraj from Global Women's Sports Radio. Uh, congrats, Latisha, on the win. Uh, I just wanted to ask you, you guys were able to just dominate points in the paint today. And then, of course, on the outside, I think you had uh, at one stretch uh, 18 points, you know, from behind the arc. Can you just talk about you guys being able to, you know, definitely, you know, as I said, uh, get position there down low in the post. Yeah, um, I think we're a team that has a lot of um, speed and height. So um, they tend to pack it in a lot, but just being able to play inside and out um, is going to be huge for us. I mean, we knocked down um, shots today, which is great. Um, and it helps us just move the ball and, and get great flow. So when we're knocking shots outside of the arc, um, we're able to penetrate as well. So um, it, it was a great balance. And I'm really happy that we're, we're getting the groove of that. Next question is from Donnie. Donnie, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Donnie Woods with World Exposure Report. Congratulations on the win and a great game. Um, what would you talk? Uh, what would you talk about Saxton? What she brings to the team and on and off the court. Man, she's a ball of energy. She does all the little things um, that people think as the little things, but she works so hard. She works so hard on defense. She works so hard on offense, and she gives us that boost that we need every single game, day in and day out. So um, I'm just so happy to see her play and see um, how hard she works, and it boosts us all to just keep um, working hard and lock in. Next question is from Keith. Keith, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Hey, Leticia, Keith Alsep, 24-7 Sports again. After two knee injuries in high school and then last year having to play with the huge brace and missing time for Team Canada, do you finally feel like you're back to, you know, playing at the high level you were before the injury? And how confident are you because uh, it looked like last time you you were kind of measuring for a dunk uh, and you eased up. But, you know, do you feel back to 100%? Yeah, I'm definitely getting there, definitely. I feel a lot better. I'm moving a lot better. Um, and I'm just happy that I'm at this stage right now. I just got to keep going. We have time for one more question from Cam. Cam, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Oh, sorry. This is this is Cam Adams from Daily Gamecock. Uh, just throughout the game, it kind of seemed like there were a few moments where it looked like you guys would pull away uh, going on some runs, but Georgia Tech kind of kept it close throughout the game. Just what were they doing um, after those runs, uh, keep it so close for so long? 
I mean, it's a sweet 16, so every team is going to bring their all. Um, we knew that coming into the game, it wasn't just going to be a cakewalk. It was something that we're going to have to um, work towards to get. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, they were just bring that intensity, and um, they were leaking out. They were making some shots. So um, we definitely had to adjust to that, but um, we knew that we were not going to be shaken up because this is a sweet 16, and every team is going to give their best. Patisha, thank, thank you for your time, and good luck in the next round. Thank we will you. be joined shortly by head coach Don Staley. Please use this time to raise or lower your hand as necessary. Thank you, guys. We are now joined by head coach Don Staley. And the first question will come from Joe. Joe, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Joe Gorcho, WIS TV, Columbia, South Carolina. Congrats, Don, on the win today. What does it say about your team that Aaliyah Boston, the force that she has been, goes scoreless in the first half, yet offensively, you guys look so connected? What, what message and how much confidence does that give you moving forward for a player like Boston to be held scoreless and yet your team still finds ways to light it up? I mean, th this team is resilient um, um, and, and determined and focused on um, the task at hand. And we found ourselves with Aaliyah Boston in a little foul trouble early on. So we, you know, we had to pivot and this team pivoted extremely well today. Um, it's, it's good to hit shots. I think we can afford ourselves um, that situation when we're hitting shots. Um, and, you know, I, I just thought over the course of 40 minutes, I thought we did a great job at just um, making Georgia Tech go a little bit deeper into um, some of the things that they wanted. Um, Lada got off early. They, you know, they tried to find mismatches on the floor. And I just thought we did a great job at just, just winning the game, doing whatever we needed to do to win the game, no matter how it looked. But fortunately for us, we got some shots to, to, to fall and got some shots to fall deep. Next question is from David. David, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Hey, Don, David Kloniger from the Post and Courier back home. Uh, you mentioned hitting shots. Um, just how much confidence does it give you that even when Aaliyah may not be hitting them, you can go to the bench and get a couple of threes from Dusty Littleton and get 10 points for, in the first half from LA? I mean, it, it's great. I mean, I mean, we're playing where where I thought we could play a little bit um, earlier in the season or or, or later in the season. Um, I, I just think there's an extra effort of concentration. There's an extra effort of um, players knowing that they're going to play. Like, L.A. knows she's going to play, and she's going to play some pretty significant minutes for us. Destiny Littleton knows that she's going to play. Um, so I think they can relax, and once they get in the game, they can be who they are and the best, you know, the best version of who they are. Um, and it couldn't happen at, at a more crucial time with, with Lily going out. Next question is from Chantel. Please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Hey, Don, this is Chantel Jennings with The Athletic. In your post-game interview with LaChina, you had mentioned sort of that balance of being focused but loose and kind of striking that balance. You thought maybe they were a little too focused um, early on in the game. I'm just curious, in a bubble setting, because this has taken all of you guys, coaches, players, out of the routines that you're used to, how much harder is it to find that balance going into games when you guys are doing something you've never really done in terms of this situation? Well, I, I thought for the first two games we were, we were pretty loose, meaning focused but loose. Um, today I thought we were focused and tight. Um, and I don't know if that helped the ball go in the hole a little bit better. Um, it's just defensively um, in the first quarter, you know, we had some uh, miscommunication on our ball screen defense. Um, and then we, you know, second quarter we just had to scrap it because, you know, they, were, they, they weren't doing what we – what we game plan for. So, and you know, the coaches, we, we got together and just said, we're gonna actually do what they're doing. We're just gonna, we're just gonna go under it because we were getting hung up on it and we were supposed to switch in, in different instances. And um, we just found the, 
the you know the path of least resistance and doing the things that they were doing out there and making adjustments around just what they were doing naturally and you know if they they were a little tight then we got to go with the flow and we just can't put a you know a square peg in the round hole and try to you know get them to do it the way we we feel gives us a a, a better opportunity to win next question is from Doug Doug, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Hey, Don, Doug Feinberg, the Associated Press. I got two questions for you. The first one is, what does it mean to get this team in the Elite Eight again? I know you've been there a few times recently, but to get back to that spot. And the second one is, what did it mean to have your sister here today watching the game, watching you guys live? Uh, I mean, to get back here, and not very many teams. Um, have gotten here. Um, not very many South Carolina teams. I think one, other than what we've been through. Um, so I mean, it 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 is is the hard work and the, you know what what, the legacy of of some of our leaders who played here at South Carolina left with us. Um, you know, Ty and Kiki, they've been here before. Um, they got robbed of an opportunity to to come back here last year. So it's great to see them leaving this type of legacy with some of these younger players and they've gotten us back to this point. So it wasn't just about this year. It, it, I mean, our players played extremely hard this year and they put themselves in this position. But if we didn't have the type of season that we had last year and the interactions that we had um, within our team, I, I don't think you can just come here just, you know, there are too many great teams and great programs here um, to think you can just flip a switch and be here. There, there are people that put us in this position that allowed us to familiarize ourselves with playing at a high level. And, and when it was time to do that, we were able to do that. So it's great. Um, my sister being here is, you know, is an awesome thing. You know, I, I look forward to hearing her call my name out. I, I don't necessarily, I don't know where she is all the time, but I, I'll give, a, once I hear it, I give her a little nod, a, a little Philly nod to say, yep, I hear you, but I can't see you, especially if I don't have my glasses on. Um, but it's great. I mean, she made the trip out here last night, got in late, um, got up early, got some breakfast, and, you know, she got into her game day routine, and it was good to, to share this moment with her. And hopefully we can continue that so her stay can be extended. Next question is from Mike. Mike, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Hey, Don, this is actually Cam Gaskins with ABC Columbia. I forgot to change my name out when I logged in. Um, you've talked a lot about your defense having turned a corner and having bailed out some of your, your less impressive offensive performances. So seeing the shooting performance you guys had today, how important is it to see that complimentary two-way type of game moving forward through this tournament? I mean, it was it was awesome. I mean, I almost we, – we get to the – I was almost feeling bad for our players because – um, we haven't hit very many three-point baskets, and, and we, we've taken good shots, but we they just didn't fall. So from uh, when do we play? We played on Monday, Tuesday. So we played on Tuesday. So we, you know, uh, we we had a day off on Wednesday, but we asked the players if they wanted to shoot, and they <laughs> they all wanted to shoot. So we took them over, shot for an hour, and a lot of a lot of stuff that we did was just three-point shooting. Um, we did that on Thursday and Friday. Um, and, and Saturday, so we got a lot of three-point shooting in. So I, I think that helped a great deal. Um, it, it was great to see Zaya get to, to go down because she's a she's a pretty good catch-and-shoot three-point um, shooter. But everybody, you know, we, we had eight of them. Everybody got a, you know, Destiny Littleton was great to see that ball go in. And I do believe somebody else. Um, Henderson, Destiny Henderson got, got one to go in. So it, it's great. I think if we can get that going, it gives us an – you know, an extra layer of um, confidence and an extra layer of something that, you know, our opponents have to guard. Next question is from Eric. Eric, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Yeah, hi, Don. Eric Boynton with the Spartanburg Herald Journal. Um, is that about as good a game as you've seen from L.A.? She, she thought it was maybe her best all-around game during her time at USC and um, okay I didn't hear the last part of it but I'll, I'll answer the first part that I heard and that is um LA I mean super proud of her super proud like 
LA is probably the most confident, the most focused, the most, uh, you know, she's got a little stubbornness in her. Um, you don't, you don't overcome um, two ACLs in like, you know, a year, a year and a half span and not have some stubbornness to her. Um, but our stubbornness also allowed her to stay, to stay focused and to stay confident. Um, we didn't know what this year was going to end up being. Um, I, I, I do believe that LA um, is a player that needs to be needed. She needs to be needed. Like she needs to know um, a consistent, you know, a consistent game plan, um, knowing that she's going to get in the game. Um, that helps. I think as a coach, as you, you know, as I reflect on, you know, how she's played this year, um, and I look at how she's playing now, um, I, I probably should have did something a little bit different, um, which is, and, and granted, we're in a pandemic. Um, we had a shortened season, so we didn't have any fluff into our schedule to kind of experiment. We did experiment very early on in the year with, with actually playing her at the three um, and playing her on a perimeter. Um, and I just thought that took away from her focus. She was focusing on a lot of different things, playing the post, playing the three, playing the perimeter. Um, so I, I just chose to, to, to play her at the post because we're, you know, we're thin in the post. But having her play, you know, both on the perimeter and in the post has really helped her confidence. And it's given her the room that she needs to, you know, for us to see all that, all that talent, all that skill set. Um, and I'm, I'm super happy for her because she's, uh, she stayed there with us. You know, a lot of people would have been disgruntled. A lot of people would probably have been thinking about transferring and probably would have got leaked out. Um, but no, this team has been pretty special and pretty professional about things. Um, and that's, you know, one of the things that I love about them is they only want to play and they want, they want the best for each other, even if is at their expense and not a young pe not a lot of young people are able to balance that but still stay confident but then when their numbers called you know say hey you know she stuck it to me like this is what you could have been getting all year long you know if you believed in me if you give me that opportunity so um i'm certainly a believer next question is from david david please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation Hey, Don, it's Dave from the Post and Curry again. I wanted to ask you about Bria Beal. Uh, she seems to have turned it on late four or six today. Did you notice maybe in the past couple of months that she had maybe lost a little bit of confidence in her shot, that she'd pass up some open looks uh, just maybe because they hadn't been going in uh, for her as much? Yeah, I mean, you know, when when, when you're not a, a – and it goes back to what I just talked about with L.A. Um, you, your confidence can wane a, a bit when you're not doing it consistently. So yes, I, I do think she went through a period where um, she she had two pretty good games offensively, and then after those two games, you want to play at that level, you want to continue to give that contribution, but um, sometimes just things happen, you know. You, you you're less focused on it, or you you get to a point where you press a little bit, and it becomes a head game, you know, it becomes totally in your head, nothing to do with. You know, you can't shoot because I've never told a player not to shoot ever. I, I won't ever tell a player not to shoot. I will explain to them what are good shots and what, bad, what are bad shots. And, I, you know, I, I think sometimes if I tell Bree that that was a bad shot because if you're opening, you know, 25 seconds on the shot clock and you're open at 22 seconds on the shot clock, you're probably going to be open at 10. So let's let's go through, you know, let's go through – the, our offensive sets and see if we can create other opportunities for other people. And then you get yourself ready to take that shot um, when it gets back around to you. And sometimes that plays with younger players, um, like we don't have confidence, but um, you're, you're open for a reason. You know, they're, they're taking their chances with you rather than, you know, rather than the other players who are used to doing that. So um, she's at a good place. She's very, very focused. She's making her shots. And, you know, she's got a great balance of what she's doing. We have time for one more question, and that question is from Greg. Greg, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Hey, Don, it's Greg Hadley from the state. I was just curious. We've talked so much about missed layups this year and how that's kind of been a bugaboo. 
you guys are, are 19 of 25 today. It seemed like a lot of efficient shooting performances. How, how pleased were you to see that? I'm super pleased. Um, I, I, I think the, you know, I think our offense, although I, you know, the, our defense wasn't bad, you know, it wasn't superb, um, but our offense actually carried us today with our ability to hit layups and our ability to stretch the floor and hit some threes. So it, it, it it's, it's a work in progress. I hope it continues to get better um, and we're able to just continue to showcase that in this tournament because you got some great, some great, um, programs here that can put a lot of points on the scoreboard, but um, for us, we're going to have to have a you know a, a tremendous balance between the two, just defending and being able to efficiently score. Coach, thank you for your time and good luck in the Elite Eight. All right, thank you all. That's it for this post game news conference. The recording of the press conference will be posted in the NCAA D Digital Media Hub at ncaa.com. Thank you for joining us and have a good afternoon.